Empire. Welcome to Inside the Cap. I'm your host, Joel Corey. You can find me on Twitter at Corey Joel. That is C-O-R-R-Y. J-O-E-L, and also read my regular CBSSports.com agents take column on NFL contracts and salary cap matters. Uh, This week we're going to be taking an extensive look into the latest drama surrounding Packers quarterback and reigning NFL MVP Aaron Rodgers. It's pretty safe to say that 2021 so far has turned out to be the year of the disgruntled star quarterback. First, we had Deshaun Watson um, before the the off-the-field issues took center stage, wanting out of Houston. Then we had Aaron Rodgers expressing some unhappiness after the Packers were eliminated by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers NFC Championship game. Then it turned, it was Russell Wilson's turn. I had about the offensive line, clumsily, passive-aggressive, publicly. Now we've come full circle, back to Aaron Rodgers, which was being obscured by this other stuff, which we thought might be an issue to begin with. Aaron Rodgers on Thursday, in what may or may not have been a calculated bombshell, basically overshadowed the draft um, by having information come out about him, his discontent. Um, Rodgers does not want to return to the Packers. We found out that um, team president Mark Murphy, GM Brian Gutekunst, head coach Matt LaFleur, have all taken separate trips out to see Rodgers this offseason. One of the more interesting things that came out was a report by Trey Wingo that the Packers told Rodgers early during the offseason that they would trade him. Now, why would you tell the reigning MVP, who may have had the best year of his career, that you would trade that guy. I know you've moved up for Jordan Love last year, but wow. Um, then they uh, quickly uh, changed their minds on that. So you open Pandora's box with that. He already wasn't happy because you did something that didn't happen in New England um, in 2014. You traded up for Jordan Love without giving Aaron Rodgers a heads up. Um, In an athletic article that I read um, Friday, um, Michael Lombardi, who's been a front office executive with several teams, um, the Browns with Bill Belichick, uh, the Raiders um, for quite a long time, the Eagles, the the Browns when Joe Banner went there, second stint with the Browns, and then worked with Belichick after that job, um, said that Belichick, Gave Brady a heads up that, hey, we're going to be taking a quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo, second round. Let him know, out of common courtesy. (laughs) He wasn't, obviously Brady wasn't thrilled about that, (laughs) that they were drafting his his potential replacement, which never happened. But had enough respect to tell him what was going on beforehand. (laughs) You add that up. You've opened Tandora's box with the trade. Rodgers already didn't like the fact you took the ball out of his hands on fourth down, kicked the field goal instead of letting him go for it. And he said that if he'd known that was going to happen, the play call may have been different on third ball, third down, different decisions. But there was enough chatter going on, at least in the NFL circles, for the 49ers to pick up the phone <laughs> and see if Rodgers was available. They were quickly rebuffed, and um, they went about their merry way um, and drafted Trey Lance with the third pick. Packers are adamant they're not trading Aaron Rodgers. Now, um, Rodgers said he wants this thing resolved to his liking. Now, I tend to think that resolved to his liking could be a financial component um, where you would trade Jordan Love. I'm not going to get into that in this podcast. But it also was revealed through uh, Yahoo's Charles Robinson that he wants the GM out. (laughs) Now, It'd be one thing if he said, get rid of Jordan Love, him or me, and take care of me. But pulling the power play on the GM, 
Good luck with that one. That's something Michael Jordan couldn't accomplish in his Bulls days. If you believe some of the books that have been written through the years, mainly uh, once by Sam Smith and then Roland Lazenby, who's written several books on the Bulls. At one point, um, Jordan early in his career, I think it may have been before they won a championship or either that he wanted Krause out, went to Jerry Reinsdorf, the owner, (laughs) basically was like, you need to get rid of this dude. And Reinsdorf didn't. Krause stayed the whole time. They had a terrible relationship, Krause and Jordan. (laughs) But if Michael Jordan can't get rid of somebody in a sport where you're one of five and a basketball player exerts a lot more influence on a team than a quarterback, even though quarterback's the most important position in football, quarterback can't play defense, that ain't going to happen. So (laughs) basically, he wants out, (laughs) and they won't trade him. That's something that's been reiterated by – the GM and President Mark Murphy. <laughs> so something's going to have to give. We're going to be operating in a high-stakes game of chicken where if this standoff continues, somebody's going to have to blink. Now, one thing I wouldn't underestimate, and not for a reason you're thinking about, Aaron's, Aaron Rodgers' resolve. That has to be taken seriously. And I say it for, for this particular reason alone. This is a guy... That basically for a period of years, just stopped talking to his family. Uh, I don't know if that rift has been repaired, but we first got wind of it several years ago when his younger brother, um, Jordan, who was a quarterback at Vanderbilt, was a contestant on the uh, Bachelorette. (laughs) That There was a major rift in the Rodgers family where he wasn't talking to anybody. So... If this dude ain't going to talk to his family, then it would not surprise me if Aaron Rodgers has resolve that you typically don't see with NFL players when they are unhappy. So things are going to get a little more interesting starting um, May 17th because that's the first time you have in-person off-season workouts. And the reason it gets a little more interesting is ever since Aaron Rodgers signed this big deal uh, when he first took over as Packers quarterback in 2008, middle 2008 season, he signed an extension. Beginning in 2009 and in every contract since, he has had a $500,000 workout bonus annually that he's always earned. And the current version of it is he has to participate in 85% of the offseason workouts. So he's typically up in Green Bay working out, and if he doesn't show up to 85% of those workouts, he's not going to make the $500,000 workout bonus. Now, in the grander scheme of things, $500,000 to Aaron Rodgers isn't that much money relative to what he's made in his NFL playing contract. This is not include endorsements or anything else he's made, playoff money, just from what's in the contract. So far, $200,000. So, he can take the $500,000 hit easily. The next part to look at is this year, the mandatory mini camps will take place unlike last year because of uh, the COVID pandemic. Sometime in, in June, there's a mandatory mini camp. If you miss all three days of the mandatory minicamp, you can be fined a maximum of $93,085. It's not a mandatory fine. It's a team election. They can fine you a smaller amount or not fine you at all. Now, let's say this thing keeps going on. It extends to training camp. Both sides are firmly entrenched. That's when Rogers has to make an interesting decision. Do I report to training camp? Do I hold out? Or do I just retire? Now, the retirement angle has an interesting twist. Because Aaron Rodgers is represented by Athletes First, David Dunn. Now, David Dunn is also Carson Palmer's agent. In 2011, Carson Palmer was fed up playing for the Cincinnati Bengals and retired. Mike Brown refused to trade him. The Bengals owner, he's just sitting there at home. Bengals are off to a good start. Raiders need a quarterback shortly before the trading deadline. 
Mike Brown relents, trades Carson Palmer to the Oakland Raiders in 2011 for a 2012 first-round pick and a conditional 2013 second-round pick, which could have become a first-round pick if the Raiders appeared in the AFC Championship game in 2011 or 12, which they didn't. So Carson Palmer went for a first and a second-round pick. Now, here's the one thing that uh, Rodgers has consistently said. He wants to uh, play until his 40s. (laughs) So him holding out, I mean retiring, yeah, it could be looked upon as just a negotiating tactic or ploy. Um, it was for Palmer, but he never made those types of statements. Now, training camp typically lasts 35 to 40 days, depending upon when it starts and and the in, and for the end date for training camp under CBA purposes, collective bargaining agreement purposes, is the Sunday before the first game. And now, under the new CBA, you get fined $50,000 per day. If you are in Rogers' category, he's done contract extensions, never signed as an unrestricted free agent. So that final one week's game check for each preseason game missed would not apply to him. So it's a mandatory $50,000 per day fine you can't forgive. So off the top, if he went the holdout route, we're talking uh, he's out anywhere from $1.75 to $2 million. Now, if uh, he goes the holdout route as opposed to retirement, he got a $57.5 million signing bonus when he was made the highest paid player in the NFL in 2018, averaging $33.5 million per year. That's the biggest signing bonus in league history. There's $11.5 million of bonus proration of signing bonus uh, in the first five years from when he signed. That's 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. So, when you hold out, when the holdout reaches the sixth day, the team is allowed to try to recoup 15% of your signing bonus proration of the 11.5 million. That'd be 1.725 million they could try to recoup. For each day you miss a training camp after that, it's 1%, up to a maximum of a total of 25% in the preseason. So if Rogers held out the entire preseason, that's $2.875 million they could try to recruit. They don't have to. It's not mandatory like the fines, but they have the right to. Then, you extend your holdout into the regular season. You miss one game, that's another 25% that they could have the rights to. That's another $2.875 million. Now, holdout extends after the fourth week. Then, for each additional week you miss, it's one eighteenth of the remain of the... Uh, Proted amount. So that'd be $638,889 per week until you got to the $11.5 million of signing bonus proration, which would be the max. Now, that's not all. That $6.8 million roster bonus, the third day league year roster bonus that's already vested, they'd have the rights to recoup that for roster bonuses, um, reporting bonuses, and option bonuses. They're recoupable only. If a breach occurs in the year, that's earned. He said roster bonuses in the past in 2019 and 20. Can't go after that one. But this is a 2021 roster bonus. So Green Bay would have the rights to go after that. And not the total amount, at least not yet. And the way that the forfeiture allocation works is it's for the current year and how many other years you have left over your contract. So he's got two more years. He's under contract through 2023. So it would be 6.8 divided by 3 which means he based forfeiture off of $2,666,666 for this year. So, sixth day of the holdout, they're entitled to 15%. They could, they could recoup that. That's $340,000. The same standards apply that for each day after, 1%, and up to a total of 25%. So, 25% of that $2,266,666 is $566,667. Misses a game, another $566,667. Then, to get to that total amount of the prorated portion for forfeiture allocations this year, after the fourth week, it's $125,926 per week. So, it's going to be a very expensive thing. Plus, for each week you don't play in the regular season, 
you're forfeiting a game check. That's money you don't earn. So that would be $816,667 that he would get paid each week. Now, the interesting thing about the roster bonus is I haven't paid it to him yet. The payment schedule is paid concurrently with base salary. So he doesn't start getting payment for the $6.8 million roster bonus until the season starts. So they can they have the right to deduct money that they're owed from fines, from money they're trying to recoup. And if you try to recoup money from him, you would further alienate Aaron Rodgers. So who knows if they would go that route, but they'd be entitled to it. So total cost of a preseason holdout <laughs> would be you got – Three million four hundred forty-one thousand six hundred sixty-seven dollars in terms of bonus forfeiture potentially, just for the preseason. And let's say it's the minimum amount of training camp days, so it's one point seven five million. You're talking basically a little under five point two million dollars, right there, right there. <laughs> They'd be entitled to. We're not talking about getting the regular season, and if he uh, misses any, starts missing the game check of a little over $815,000 per week. Now you miss one game? Yeah. Then the forfeiture amounts double. So you're talking $6,883,334 of bonus forfeiture. They can re- they can try to recoup. Plus you got the fine amount. So then you're out for missing one game. $8,633,334. So very expensive proposition. Now, if you take this to the logical extent and you hold out the whole year, well, let's say it's the maximum, $2 million training camp fine, it's 40, say 40 days of training camp. They can recoup $11.5 million of signing bonus. <laughs> they can recoup $2,266,666 of roster bonus. So right there, you're talking, you could be paying them $15,766,666. $666. He's scheduled to make 14.7 in base salary this year. So that's not even <laughs> – the amount they could recoup in the fines is more than he's supposed to make this year. So if you forfeit salary and they come after you and force their rights to the fullest, that's a swing of $30,466,666 for Aaron Rodgers. Plus his contract, we're told. He'd still be under contract for three years. What's up? It's Mike Jones from the Football Jones Podcast. I know you're enjoying your time with Inside the Cap, but once you're done, I want to invite you to come over and check out my podcast. Each week, we take a deep dive into some of the most pressing topics around the NFL. High-profile guests from the coach, player, and front office ranks, as well as the top league insiders. Check out the Football Jones Podcast, another fine product brought to you by Empire Media. Retirement has its own set of uh, financial problems, but if it's a retirement, then I can find you $50,000 per day for training camp. So that's uh, $1.75 to $2 million that you uh, aren't out of. But when you retire, uh, a team can recoup the remaining signing bonus proration in your deal. So if he stayed, so Aaron Rodgers stayed retired through the 2021 season, if he went that route, then that's $11.5 million they could ask for back from him. Um, and then if he stayed retired the next year, 2022, they could ask for another $11.5 million back for him. So that'd be $23 million total. Since the roster bonus was earned this year, it's forfeitable. If I'm them, since there's the 6-8 they haven't paid and he's retired, I don't pay any of it. Say that we're keeping all of it, even though for forfeiture purposes... It's supposed to be, as I was saying earlier, the basically the two million two hundred sixty six thousand six hundred sixty six dollars per year. That'd be the first two years, then it'd be six hundred sixty eight dollars in the last year, two million two sixty six 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 eight for twenty twenty three. So if he kept staying retired through twenty twenty three, that's the position that Rogers would take, even though the team would say we're keeping all of it right now, come get it, file a grievance. The it would be proportional that he'd give back at one third of that six, eight roster bonus in 2021 for stayed retired the whole year. Then in 2022, then another one third in 2023. So you're not making any money in your contract tolls as well. 
during those years, you're retired. But there's no cheap way. So that either way, it's going to be expensive conviction for Aaron Rodgers um, if he has that type of resolve and Green Bay doesn't blink. Now, in terms of a trade, uh, one thing that's interesting is Aaron Rodgers doesn't have no trade clause in his contract. They're not that common in the NFL, but you do see several players having them. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo has a no trade clause just for the 2021 year. Tom Brady has one in his Bucks contract, and there was one in that last year for uh, the last reworking of the Patriots contract. Russell Wilson, no trade clause. Deshaun Watson, no trade clause. DeAndre Hopkins has a no trade clause. He was able to get it um, because Larry Fitzgerald had one, so they had given one before. And J.J. Watt has one. I think he was able to get it because of Fitzgerald and Hopkins. Uh, Patrick Mahomes has a no-trade clause. Interestingly, when Laurent Duvernay Tardif, uh, before he opted out, took a pay cut in 2020, has a no-trade clause. Dak Prescott, no-trade clause. Um, Drew Brees and Eli Manning previously had no-trade clauses. So you don't have a ton of them around the league, but you're seeing them increasingly with the uh, highest-paid quarterbacks. So, with Rodgers, they could trade him anywhere. But <laughs> let's say you decide to trade Aaron Rodgers. Sure as hell aren't going to try to trade him into the NFC. <laughs> You're going to ship him so the only time you would see him in the playoffs, assuming you could get there if Jordan Love, <laughs> um, would be in the Super Bowl. So, you would ship him out west. And he had a short list of teams that were preferred destinations. Uh, the 49ers were one. That's out of the question now. And I wouldn't be sending the 49ers anyway. They're in the Super Bowl. <laughs> they knocked you out of the playoffs <laughs> You're in 2000, 2019 season. And very easily could have won the Super Bowl uh, that year. Uh, Denver Broncos, uh, Las Vegas Raiders, two teams. But there, wouldn't, there won't be an Aaron Rodgers trade, if there is one, before June 2nd. Right now he's got a $37.202 million cap hit. That's the largest cap number in the NFL for this year. Because of a restructure that took place in 2019 where they converted 14 point, I think it was 14.26 million of salary into a bonus. So it was prorated um, through the contract. If you were to trade Aaron Rodgers before June 1, all the proration in the contract future years hits the cap in 2021. So there's 31, that'd be 31.566 million of proration you would have, plus you're responsible for the $6.8 million roster bonus. So there'd be a $38.356 million cap charge, which is going to add $1.154 million to the current cap hit. Yeah, he'd be off your books after this year. So you'd be picking up $39.852 million of cap room in 2022 and $28.5 Three five two million a cap room in 2023, but they're not going to take that type of cap hit <laughs> to trade him. If they get to that point, they'd have to do it in a month to come to the conclusion we're trading him because today is May 2nd. So if he's going to be traded, it's going to be after June 1. And after June 1, the bonus proration from 2022 and 2023 does not hit the cap this year. It's a 2022 cap charge. So you'd have... $21.152 million cap hit. That's the bonus proration associated to this year plus the $6.8 million roster bonus. So you'd be picking up $16.05 million of cap room, and you'd be picking up $22.648 million of cap room. And then in, 20, in, his, um, in 2023, you'd pick up $28.352 million of cap room. Because you've already paid the roster bonus, and assuming he wouldn't earn the... Uh, $500,000 workout bonus. I'm assuming he's going to forfeit that and not show up. Then that's a $14.7 million salary he has for this year. 25-5 next year, 25-5 in 2023. So you'd be getting Aaron Rodgers $65.7 million in cash for three years. He's 37 right now. So he said he could play into his uh, 40s. It's not slowing down. Had the best year of his career arguably, but you got the reigning MVP who was the best quarterback during the regular season last year for under $22 million a year. Now, your cap charge initially would be 15.5 because he's got a million dollars in incentives 
um, each year, and he earned $850,000 of those incentives. Some of them were related to playoffs. The others were 500000 was individual incentives had to be in the top three in certain categories, which he was. So that's $15.5 million of cap room you'd need. Um, I believe under the likely, not likely, be earned rules, if he went to a non-playoff team, the Raiders and Broncos both, both weren't playoff teams, that 350 of that would be switched to uh, not likely because neither team made the playoffs. But in any event, the Broncos have plenty of cap room. They're more than able to take over uh, absorbing Aaron Rodgers' contract. Now, I would assume they'd try to try to package Teddy Bridgewater, uh, they, who they just acquired from Carolina, who I think they're only paying $3 million of his salary because Carolina ate seven of it. He took, he took a pay cut. He was making had a 18 total, 17 as a base. 10 was guaranteed, so seven was paid out during a signing bonus. I think there's three left. So they'd be taking back a $3 million salary, um, and that'd be competition for Jordan Love uh, to play this year if they work something out in a trade for Aaron Rodgers to go to Denver. Now, Raiders, maybe Green Bay be interested in taking Derek Carr back is a part of that. He's under contract for two years, and there's about $39.5 million left in his contract. He's got a $100,000 workout bonus, which I'm assuming timing of the trade would not apply, so that's $19.25 million this year if there's a trade to the Raiders. John Gruden would love that. Would be He's only, like really loved one quarterback he's had, Rich Gannon, who took him to a Super Bowl, who actually took them to a Super Bowl the year after he left, and he beat Rich Gannon in the Super Bowl. And he's supposed to make um, $19,877,519 in 2022. Now, for the Raiders, because there's a small amount of, uh, actually for Green Bay, um, actually, what it was, actually what I was saying, um, for that's doable. Because you've got Rodgers at um, 14-7 left. He's coming in at 19 uh, five, two, five. Maybe you get the Raiders to eat some of that salary on the way out the door as well so you don't take on any additional room because you got the $21.152 million in dead money, so that may be a way for it to work. And then next year, you would have the $17.024 million. Rodgers was supposed to make 25.5, so you're going to be picking up you're you're, you're going to be picking up 22.648 million in cap space, and Carr's salary is under that, so it, it it could work. It could work with the Raiders as well. Raiders don't have nearly as much cap room heading into the draft. They had about a little over five million, 5.32 million, not on the approved list. But if I'm the Dolphins, AFC team, I know you got Tua huh, that you took in the first round huh, last year. <laughs> I'd cast him aside, see if uh, you want two young quarterbacks to duke it out. Among other things, Jordan Love or Tua, best man wins. That's your quarterback of the future. Trade one of them, trade the other one. And there. And jokingly, I say this. Here's the one way you can solve, Green Bay can solve their problem. Russell Wilson has been disgruntled, seems to be mending fences. They don't have any, everything seems to be uh, calmed down up there. He's got no trade clause, but hey. Ship him within the conference. Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, problem solved. One star quarterback for another, superstar quarterback for another. Wilson played in Wisconsin that last year after he left NC State and got forced out by Tom O'Brien for because he wanted to play uh, Mike Glennon. Rodgers on the West Coast. There you go. I'm, I'm just kidding. That's not going to happen. Uh, well, it's just never should never say never, but I say that in jest. But Denver seems like the most realistic option, more so than the Raiders. But we'll see how this thing shakes out. Packers, for now, aren't say they're not going to trade Aaron Rodgers. He seems to be determined to get out of town sooner rather than later. I still think money solves problems. They've supposedly offered him an extension. Wasn't accepted. Most players have a price. That's at least as my experience as an agent, that money can make people happy. We'll see. We'll see if uh, how far Rodgers is willing to take this, if Green Bay sticks to their guns, because it could be a very expensive proposition for him. But this is not the last we've heard of the Aaron Rodgers Green Bay Packers rift, and it's going to be an ongoing story until somebody 
blinks one way or another. That's it for this week's uh, Inside the Cap. Thanks for listening. Don't forget, you can find me on Twitter. That is Corey Joel, C-O-R-R-Y, J-O-E-L. And also, uh, read my regular CBSSports.com and Agents Tape. Um, We'll see you back here next time. 